on my way to Bethesda right now, where I'm going to meet Danny Prince, retired FDNY. He's also a retired uh, military guy from the from the Coast Guard. And Danny, uh, Danny spearheaded this um, drive to uh, where we got uh, roughly 25 pounds of steel from the World Trade Center uh, wreckage. Various projects that we did with uh, making uh, crosses or stars of David's or numbers or names, all the excess that was left over, we just put in a special uh, holder. And when we got 25 pounds, that's uh, we cupped it off, and that's what I brought down today to Walter Reed. And then we are going to um, ship it down to Dallas, where there is a fellow who's a swordsmith, and he's going to melt it um, and forge it into a Spartan sword that is going to be our um, symbolic um, piece during the Spartan weekend that's going to take place here in the Washington DC area in just over two months. So here we are at the gate and I'm fortunate uh, in that I somehow managed to retire with an honorable discharge. So getting on and off the base is not really a hassle for me. Hey, how are you doing? All right, take care. Today, to walk the reed to get to you, and that's what you have. So what, what did you, uh, what were your thoughts when, when you got approached with the idea of using the steel to for the sword, for the Spartan sword. Oh, I thought it was outstanding. I mean, from uh, the, all that destruction of the steel and what happened that day was a disaster, and to turn it around into something that's going to be a, a benefit to our great soldiers and sailors and uh, airmen. Uh, this is just uh, you can't can't accomplish anything better than that with that steel. Incorporated into it. Danny sent me a big box of tiny pieces of. World Trade Center. On the blade itself, I've put um, some symbolism on this side, and I've put strength, courage, and honor in Latin in the star field. And on this side, we've got 9 11 01, 2,566 civilians, 343 fire department, 71 police department. Eight EMTs, Flight 11, Flight 175, and here in Latin it says, "I'm probably going to mispronounce this." Ni oblivus gan amor, which means, "Lest we forget." Uh, when we get the sword back in our possession, uh, we have a couple of spots that we're looking at that will be prominent where it should be displayed. One of them is our military section of the FDMY, where we have all our. Uh, military uh, soldiers that have gone to combat and uh, some that have perished and it will be on beckoning call 24-7 so if we need it for a pledge somewhere we have easy access to it. Two are related, right? Just a little. Just a little bit. You gave birth to this guy, Jeez. and then he went and joined the military. <laughs> and you were in the military too. Yep. Followers so. footsteps. This is the first time that I know of that the Spartan Pledge is going to be administered to a mother and son. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And, and, and on this day specifically, when we're talking about FDNY, you know, the Spartan Pledge, I think, needs to make a little bit of a jump. Because, yes, it's made for war fighters, but who cannot say that on that day, FDNY and, and NYPD and those guys driving those ferries to get people out of the way, you know, across the Hudson, they were war fighters on that day. Because a war fighter is anybody who stands in front or behind a gun to defend America. They were war fighters on that day. So as we talk about the Spartan Pledge, let's also talk about the people that serve this great country. And when we talk about the Spartan Pledge, we're talking about saving the greatest of this country, the greatest of this generation.
because we're taking the warrior ethos and we're turning it on, on its head. We're making sure that that warfighter understands that before things get funky and you get in that funky funk, just like I'm sure firefighters do, just like I'm sure police officers do, before you get in that funky funk, you got an SOP. You know what you're going to do. You know where you're going to go to. You know how to deal with it. Not only that, you understand there's already someone who's made the commitment to you to also be there in that time of need. And just in the, just a, a, like as war fighters, we know from day one when you hit basic training, you got a drill sergeant in your face going, where's your battle buddy? Where's your battle buddy? You never get separated. But for some reason, we get into the civilian world and everybody scatters. But what we're, doing, we're saying come back together. We're saying become part of the community because the community is the way to life. That's just the truth. So let's take this pledge. Anybody else want to take it? Get on up here. It's only two sentences. Repeat after me. I will not take my life with my own hand. I will, I will not, not take, take my life, life with my own, own hand. Until I talk to my battle buddy first. Until, Until I, I talk, talk to my, my battle buddy, buddy first. first. My mission. My, my mission. Is to find a mission. Is to find a mission. To help my warfighter family. To help, to help my, my warfighter family. Hurrah. Thank you. God bless. God bless you, bro. God bless, God bless you, Dan. Good morning, my name is Gerard Chapora, and I'd like to welcome you to the FDNY's 10 House and our 9-11 Memorial Wall. At this time, I would like to introduce our first speaker, retired firefighter Danny Prince. Thank you, Chip. Thank you everybody for being here. I couldn't think of a better place than having this pledge and having this ceremony here at this sacred spot, which this was done almost 15 years ago. The tragedy that happened. But out of that tragedy, we have life and a beautiful sword that's gonna be pledged to main, remain for our servicemen and to remember what they have given. The gentleman that wrote that pledge was in Walter Reed for two years. And he said that he remembers the firemen and policemen coming down, bringing down shirts and gifts for the two years he was there. Little did I know I would meet him when we picked up the sword last week. It's amazing what goes on and the amount of injuries and deaths that occur. 22 veterans a day. And that's just un unbelievable and we can't let that continue. So today we're going to do the pledge with our soldiers that are here. Some of our firefighters might want to take it. It doesn't mean that you're contemplating anything on yourself, but it's stating that you will be there if somebody needs you. You will be the battle buddy. And that's what's so important to these veterans, to let them know. At this time, we'll administer the Spartan Pledge. Will all the participants please step forward and face the podium? Is there anybody else that would like to take a pledge? Please step up. Okay, please repeat after me. I will not take my life by my own hand until I talk to my battle buddy first. My mission is to find a mission to help my warfighter family. Thank you for taking place.
On behalf of the Fire Commissioner and Chief of Department and the Executive Staff, thank you all for attending today, today's special event at this very special place. This concludes the event. Everybody, please have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming.